Nicola Lucchi is now ready for his presentation. That is the last for this afternoon. He, we have a collaboration in Florence. Uh, he works since a long time. And uh, we, he works at the Institute for Sustainable Plant Protection at the National, Council, uh, National Research <laughs> Council. And uh, we, we have this, we collaborated since uh, several years. And uh, we, he tried uh, this new approach on plants uh, for single cell analysis, uh, and he will show us his uh, results. Thank you very much, Nicola. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to this uh, meeting. And um, in this presentation, I will show. Uh, work that we developed with the Pamela Research Group and uh, particularly with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Francesca Salvianti and Dr. Irene Mancini uh, and also uh, Pamela Pinzani. And we uh, try to uh, transfer this uh, new technology from uh, clinical cancer research to plant uh, disease. So firstly, I... Uh, have to introduce uh, the uh, disease uh, uh, which we are studying and uh, is uh, the the pathogen is uh, ceratocystis platani that is a fungal uh, ascomycetus that uh, uh, causes uh, canker disease on plane trees on monumental and, uh, and ornamental plane trees uh, this pathogen is present uh, in uh, urban trees uh, and also in natural uh, ecosystem especially in the last uh, a few years where in Greece uh, caused a long, uh, uh, a, a bad disease with a, a, long, a lot of losses of uh, uh, trees. This pathogen is uh, spread by uh, mainly my, by human uh, with the cutting, and uh, when uh, one uh, uh, dye tree is uh, cut, uh, the disease is spread with uh, uh, the instrument that people use to cut this, uh, these uh, trees. This is, is a typical symptom of the disease with uh, uh, brownish of the tissue and the disease is a vascular uh, uh, disease. So uh, the pathogen is present within the uh, vessel of the host and uh, in a few months uh, uh, the big tree can die and uh, transmit the uh, pathogen in another uh, tree. This is our, the uh, image of the um, transversal section of uh, this colored uh, wood where uh, we can see the action of the pathogen. And uh, here you can see an uh, anatomical uh, uh, section within the vessel. So you can see the round part that represents the conidia of the fungus that uh, growth within the host. So this system is quite similar to uh, the uh, circulating uh, tumor cell in, uh, in human. And for this reason, we uh, try to optimize a new method for uh, uh, the detection. This uh, is uh, an image that shows the different uh, reproduction stages of the fungus. Uh, we have a sexual stage uh, uh, that show the, a lot of the ascospores and the asexual stage that uh, represent the conidia. Uh, both uh, of these uh, uh, stages uh, are very important in the spread of the fungus. And uh, the problem of this pathogen is that it is an invasive species in Europe and is a quarantine pathogen. So uh, it is uh, probably probably arrived in Europe uh, during the Second World War uh, from uh, infected packaging uh, material, and uh, uh, the was was spread initially in uh, in Italy because of the first uh, uh, detection, uh, the, the first uh, arrival of the fungus in Italy was uh, in uh, 1972. Then in in France in 1973 and then was spread uh, in all of the Europe. So from the USA, the pathogen come to the Europe. Uh, 
uh, recently in the 2015 uh, is arrived also in Turkey and also in uh, Greece where uh, it is causing serious damages uh, on natural ecosystems. Uh, as I told before, this pathogen is spread by uh, natural, uh, uh, by, by human activity with the cutting and uh, the, there is also a regulamentation of this pathogen because uh, once uh, a tree is died for this pathogen from uh, caused by Ceratocystis, uh, we have to remove immediately the tree uh, by using uh, uh, particular uh, uh, rules. And during this uh, cutting, uh, a lot of inoculum of the pathogen, mainly due to the uh, sawdust infected, is spread along the, uh, the, the, the landscape. So for this reason, it's important uh, uh, to uh, perform uh, molecular detection methods that are able to uh, detect uh, the pathogen at early stage of the colonization. In this uh, uh, figure, you can see uh, four different stages uh, where uh, the molecular detection methods are uh, uh, considered in plant pathology. So the first uh, uh, stage is the prevention. So we have to use uh, detection methods before the presence of the pathogen in uh, a country. Then uh, we have also, uh, we can uh, uh, use molecular methods for the pre steps. Uh, so before the uh, pathogen is arrived into the new hosts or new environment, and also uh, the use of molecular methods uh, is uh, uh, performed also for the early colonization. Uh, it means that uh, a lot of uh, pathogens are present in the uh, latent phase in asymptomatic host tissue uh, without showing any symptoms before the uh, outbreak of disease. And in this stage, we can uh, perform uh, um, we can develop these methods to prevent the possible outbreak of the disease. The last is once the pathogen is uh, already arrived and for the eradication and the management of the disease, uh, it is necessary to uh, uh, close the uh, infected area. So in, this, in all of these cases, the use of molecular methods are very important. And uh, uh, we perform an experiment uh, just to see uh, how uh, real-time molecular assay that we developed on Ceratocystis platani uh, worked. Uh, so uh, we used uh, simple airborne traps, and uh, with these traps we uh, extracted directly the DNA, and then we used the real-time PCR to detect the presence of the uh, inoculum in the in the air. This uh, study uh, has been performed during the sanitation cutting of uh, infected trees. And here I just show an image where uh, uh, in yellows are present the traps that we place on a uh, uh, street light. Uh, the, the traps are composed by aluminum uh, tray with the Watman filter wetted in a buffer. And then uh, after we placed these traps before cutting, uh, and after cutting, we remove these uh, traps. And from these traps, uh, we extract directly the uh, DNA. In red, you can see the uh, point where the infected trees are present. So after the molecular analysis, we showed that, that uh, we found that, uh, that the, the pathogen can spread uh, in uh, 200 meters from the closest, uh, closest symptomatic trees. So it means that during the cutting of this uh, uh plants uh, infected plants that the the pathogen can spread uh, from different meters uh, one recent uh, work that uh, we also used for the rapid detection in field there was the lamp is uh, an isothermal uh, amplification method that use uh, uh, six uh, uh, primers able to detect the target pathogen so in this case, uh, we uh, perform uh, uh, with several uh, quarantine pathogens. Uh, the lamp assay we have developed for Phytophthora ramorum that uh, causes uh, disease in uh, root of plants with Xarella fastidiosa that is now present uh, 
unfortunately, in the southern of Italy, uh, and also on Ceratocystis platanus. So I just uh, show briefly how this uh, method uh, works. So uh, we just uh, cut the sawdust from uh, the infected tree with a drill. Then uh, with, uh, by using the lysis buffer, uh, we are able to perform in field the DNA extraction. And uh, uh, when we place uh, uh, 10 microliters from this uh, uh, lysis buffer with the uh, uh, woody samples, we can place in a Lucian buffer and then we perform the lamp analysis. So, so the DNA extraction, it uh, uh, takes just uh, two, three minutes. And uh, in uh, 30 minutes, we can analyze uh, 16 samples. So we have uh, in field uh, an important uh, uh, analysis of this, the presence of this disease. But we want to do uh, go uh, uh, by using another method. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this is another, just to show you the limit of detection of the lamp assay. So uh, this method was able to uh, detect a very low uh, amount uh, of DNA of uh, Ceratocystis platani and uh, is in for a uh, rapid and in-field analysis is very, uh, is very useful. But as I told you, uh, we wanted to just to uh, use uh, this new method with the, the single cell analysis uh, to trap uh, the uh, conidia of Ceratocystis platani. So our aims uh, uh, in this preliminary study, our aim was to uh, use, isolate the single cell or pooled cells of this uh, uh, conidia. And then uh, our future aim is to uh, detect the presence of this conidia within the sap of the uh, plant. So we've, we perform a preliminary study uh, by using uh, conidia from uh, uh, mycelium of Ceratocystis platani. So, so we uh, prepare a suspension of conidia in, uh, by using also as an uh, by using a um, buffer. And then these conidia were also uh, intercalated with, uh, sorry, we use the nuclear intercalating dyes just to uh, mark this conidia. Then uh, the suspension was uh, uh, loaded in the cartridge of deep array, and uh, by using the deep array cell separator, we were able to uh, detect the single uh, uh, the single conidia. So we were able to trap the single and, as I told you, the group of uh, uh, conidia. This is just to show you that the the, uh, the the chip of the uh, single cell. So you can see the main chamber where we have all conidia and then the main chamber have to move to part in chamber and finally in the point tree there is a cham exit chamber where uh, the conidia move into the macro tube so here uh, you can see the uh, main chamber with the, all the black dot with uh, that represent the conidia of ceratocystis platani so we have a lot of conidia within this uh, uh, chamber and then uh, here uh, you can see an image in, uh, of the uh, conidia with uh, uh, different uh, intercalating uh, dye. So here in the next slide, uh, we can see uh, the different conidia that we have selected for the uh, capture. And uh, we found uh, three types three different uh, uh, type of conidia. So round conidia in the first uh, row, a cluster of conidia in the second uh, row, and the last row, the elongated uh, conidia with, uh, uh, um, with, uh, with this uh, uh, form. So here uh, we can see in the uh, recovery chamber the three different colors of uh, conidia. So in red uh, are marked the uh, around conidia in uh, uh, orange uh, the uh, uh, elongated conidia and in the purple the cluster of uh, of conidia so from each uh, different uh, type of conidia we were able to uh, isolate the uh, in a single uh, microtube 
So this is, is the deep array that showed the single, uh, uh, that the single conidia and the cluster of conidia were uh, uh, catched. And then uh, we perform from single conidia and from uh, cluster of conidia the uh, amplification from, uh, by using a whole genome amplification kit. So after that, uh, the, uh, was performed the amplification and sequencing uh, by using a specific marker of Ceratocystis platani that were previously uh, designed in a QPCR assay. So we use the forward reverse primer. And uh, uh, then the uh, se sequencing showed the presence of this amplicon in a single conidia. So this is, the, is uh, a good uh, start. Uh, for the optimization of this method. Uh, so we perform this method from the poor uh, culture of uh, the fungus, but uh, our aim is to uh, move to the infected plant. So uh, just to show a preliminary study that we have performed in the past and the, where we want to uh, continue to study the single cell. So in this case, we use uh, uh, different cuttings uh, of uh, plane that were inoculated uh, with the, the fungus uh, that uh, by using a plug of mycelium. Then the, uh, the inoculation was performed by a wound. So the one, so we placed the plug, we closed with paraffin, and uh, then the cutting were placed in, uh, in the water. After uh, seven days, uh, the symptoms uh, showed that the uh, discoloration of the leaves but uh, uh, below the inoculation site you can see a symptomless leaf leaf so we remove that leaf uh, and we place that leaf uh, uh, within the uh, pressure chamber uh, that uh, is a chamber that uh, pump the uh, nitrogen in the stomata of the leaves uh, and from the uh, petiole uh, the sap uh, containing the fungus is uh, can be removed this uh, chamber is able to is used for uh, the potential uh, of the to study the hydrical potential of the plants. But in this case, we can use to remove the sap and to collect the sap from the the plant. Then we perform the DNA extraction, and by using a specific uh, marker in QPCR, we uh, we found the fungus uh, within this uh, this sap. So uh, this is very important because uh, uh, our aim is to use this sap for uh, a future uh, study, uh, mainly to combine the uh, sap extraction with single cell analysis because uh, uh, currently is uh, little is known on, uh, is uh, about the interaction between uh, vascular wilt pathogen and their host. So to study, what happened uh, within the host, uh, within the vessel, is very important. So the use of this uh, uh, single cell combined with the sap extraction uh, can be useful to study the plant pathogen interaction within uh, the host. So to isolate the uh, conidia of the fungus when it's spread within the host, uh, and to study also the interaction with, uh, with the, the plant uh, pathogens. In addition, uh, we have to we can also check this plant susceptibility against uh, this uh, quarantine pathogen. Uh, we know that our present uh, resistant uh, clone of uh, plane that uh, uh, are able to uh, avoid <laughs> the um, dead uh, and so compare resistant to su against the susceptible clone is very important and to study the uh, reaction of this, uh, uh, this plant. In addition, we can use this uh, combination between single cell and also sap extraction to study to study the um, uh, plant fungus interaction be before symptoms uh, occur in the host. So also to prevent uh, the possible uh, spread uh, in the host. So that's uh, that's all. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you for uh, all the staff that helped with uh, with this study. So Pamela, uh, Francesca, and uh, and Irene, and also you uh, for your attention.